third chapter discusses the economics of pollution and pollution management. The concept of pollution is an externality and thus is a market failure. The key questions that will be addressed are Why is there pollution? How does environmental economics deal with pollution? The key concepts dis discussed are the optimal level of pollution, economic instruments, command and control, pollution taxes and emission charges, subsidies, tradable discharge permits, and standards. Consider a private company, for example a paper mill which is emitting water pollution into a river. The more paper the mill is producing, the more effluent of pollution the mill is discharging into the river. Downstream, there are households that are using the river as a source of drinking water. The households prefer to consume clean water. When there is poor water quality, due to the mill's pollution, the households have to purify the water before consuming it and thus bear the cost of pollution. These costs cause a welfare loss to the households. If the paper mill does not have to pay for the pollution it is discharging, then the producer will probably ignore the welfare loss it is causing to the households. Producers have no incentive to reduce pollution for which they do not pay. In this example, there is market failure because the paper mills do not have to pay for the pollution they are causing. Producers will not have an incentive to reduce their pollution while they do not pay for it. Thus, there will be more pollution than is socially optimal. The socially optimal point is usually not zero pollution. As without pollution, there would inevitably be no development of goods being produced. The society would accept a point somewhere between zero and the current rate of pollution as they gain some benefits in terms of employment, up and downstream businesses and goods from the producing firms. With our paper mill, these benefits would include employment at the mill, businesses such as forestry plantations and packaging, and products such as paper. The figure shows the marginal net private benefit derived by producers, that is, the additional benefit derived from producing an additional unit of output, as well as the marginal externality cost which is the additional externality cost from the production of an additional unit of output. The optimal level of output from the perspective of the producer is Q2, where M and PB is equal to zero. That is, they are maximizing their profit. While the optimal level of output from the perspective of society is Q1, where M and PB is equal to MEC, therefore, Producers take account of the pollution cost to society. Policy instruments address the issue of how to bridge the gap between the private and social optimum mentioned above. Government intervention is necessary here in terms of facilitating the shift towards the social optimum as the market is not functioning efficiently. Two types of interventions are possible here. Firstly, command and control intervention is regulatory in fashion and is pictured as the big stick of correction. The second intervention type is that of economic instruments. These instruments are market-based and likened to a carrot dangled in front of a donkey to steer them in the right direction. First, we will deal with economic instruments. Examples of these include pollution taxes, subsidies, which are the opposite of taxes, and tradable discharge permits. Economic instruments provide financial incentives to producers to reduce their pollution levels. Furthermore, they allow individual firms to select their level of pollution reduction rather than applying a blanket effect for all firms. Thus, firms that can easily afford to reduce the pollution will pollute less than another firm where the cost is higher. This intervention is thus relatively cost effective. In this section, pollution taxes will be discussed or tradable discharge permits will be briefly described. The first economic instrument discussed is the pollution tax. This tax is a fixed price charged per unit of pollution or emission. Your Q1 is the optimal level of output for such a tax. If a tax T star is charged on each unit of output producing pollution, producers would have to pay T star multiplied by their total output. Thus, the MNPB curve will shift downwards towards the MNPB minus T star curve as the marginal net private benefit is reduced by the tax. The producer will then attempt to maximize his or her private net benefits given the presence of the tax. This will occur at Q1, 
where the new M and PB curve is equal to zero. Therefore, T star is an optimal tax as it reaches the optimal output level. Difficulties arise in reality in determining T star as governments often lack adequate information regarding MEC and MNPB because of information asymmetry. Thus, government intervention is often objected. Pollution taxes result in the reduction of pollution levels as polluters now seek to reduce the levels of pollution since they have to pay a tax per unit of pollution emitted. They will reduce the pollution so long as it is cheaper to reduce the pollution than to pay the tax. Pollutants can reduce their pollution levels by reducing the output, as shown before. Otherwise, they can introduce pollution abatement technologies or use cleaner technologies to produce the outputs. These technologies have cost implications that are described in the following slide. Your MSC represents the marginal abatement costs or the additional cost of abatement per additional unit of pollution reduced. Therefore, reducing pollution to OD units from OC would result in a cost of OT. If a company was producing OC units of pollution, they would have to pay a tax of T per unit of emissions, with the total cost due of TBCO. They could then choose to abate the pollution as the tax is larger than the cost of abatement. They would abate until the emissions were OD units, where the MAC would be equal to T. They would thus pay control costs of ADC. A market for tradable discharge permits is created by pollution control authorities by issuing a number of permits. Each permit allows a firm the right to pollute a certain quantity of emissions, while the price of the permit is determined by the supply and demand in the market. A firm will consider the cost to reduce pollution or its MAC versus the cost of pollution to the firm or the permit price. If the permit price is less than MAC, the firm will buy more permits on the market. If the permit price is greater than MAC, it will rather reduce its pollution. If a firm holds permits but are able to reduce pollution at a lower cost than the permit price, it will reduce its pollution and sell the permits on the market. Command and Control the most common form of command and control intervention is the emission standard. An emission standard is a set legal limit of pollution that individual sources may permit. Thus, producers are allowed to decide how to reach that limit. The key question here is how the standard should be set to reach the social optimum level of pollution. This is done by selecting an equal reduction level from each source of pollution. However, this is not cost effective as it is expected of all the individual producers to reduce their pollution levels by the same amount, regardless of the individual cost that they would need to incur, especially since certain firms can relatively cheaply reduce their pollution while others need to incur much larger expenses. Due to the impact of this cost effective aspect, economic instruments are considered to be superior to command and control interventions. In this figure, MSC1, MSC2 and MSC3 present the marginal abatement cost curves of three firms producing the same good. Here, firm 1 has the highest MSC and firm 3 the lowest. If government would implement an emission standard of S2, then all three firms would have to reduce the emissions by zero S2. Therefore, firm 1's MSC would be equal to A, firm 2's equal to B, and firm 3 is equal to C. This implies that the implementation of a standard is not cost effective as certain polluters pay more than others to reach the same level of pollution. It would be more cost effective if firms use less resources to reduce the pollution and increase their reduction efforts. If a tax was implemented instead, the three firms would pay the same price T but achieve different reductions in the emissions levels. Thus, Firm 1 would achieve a reduction of S1 as its abatement costs are relatively expensive compared to Firm 2 and 3, who achieve S2 and S3 respectively. A tax that will also reach the socially optimal level of pollution is therefore better than a standard as it is more cost effective.